It has been a long time since I have done any sort of basic unboxing and first look at a radiator. And you know what? This is this is a little bit nostalgic for me. You see the brand on here, Heat Killer? This is a brand that has been around for a long, long time. And you know what? It's a brand that in the past, I was never really able to afford or anything, which is why it'd be befitting, befitting? Befitting that the very first time that I use a Heat Killer, it goes in my friend's build and not mine. EK Waterblock's Nucleus Series AIOs are a closed loop and maintenance free way to keep your CPU nice and cool for maximum performance. Compatible with the latest Intel and AMD CPUs, the Nucleus AIO comes in both the Lux Edition featuring ARGB lighting, as well as a dark version for a clean, light free aesthetic and an ultra clean look. Daisy chain fans allow for a super easy install, while the thicker cold plate provides an improved cooling experience versus the competitors. To see the full list of specs and sizes, follow the sponsored link in the description below. So the reason why I have this radiator is because remember the um, Mega Man build? I've slowly but surely been working on this and I'm now trying to get back to this now that I'm, I'm back to work. Um, I needed radiators for this build, but I wanted a white radiator that would allow me to kind of continue to tie in the color theme that I'm trying to do with the whole Mega Man build. Uh, but I wanted something different. In this, ch on this, in this channel, on this channel, what is channel? This, this whole water cooling adventure that I've been on now for well over two decades and well over a decade on the channel alone, I've only really used a handful of brands. I've always enjoyed using EK water block radiators and they've changed a lot over the time. And that's usually because they're, they were the most aesthetically pleasing. Um, I've used a lot of alpha cool radiators, which are uh, a lot more budget oriented and high performing and low FPI, which is fins per inch, which means although not as high of a performer because of the less fins means less cooling surface area. It's like the fins in a heat sink, less fins means less sink, uh, but it also means less pressure drop across the rod, which means less noise, less air, RPM needed with fans. There's lots of trade-offs. Maybe I'll do another video about this sort of stuff. But anyway, moving on. Uh, I've only used a handful of brands and I think I used, um, what was it? Nem the Nemesis radiators from uh, Hardware Labs like in one build iteration of mine. Heat Killer has been around for a long time, a long, long time. And they were always like a boutique brand that I was never able to really afford. They made water blocks for the graphics cards, 600 series Nvidia, like my 680 and whatnot. They made blocks for that. They made CPU blocks and they made components, but they were just, if I were to spec out and build a heat killer loop versus going with like even EK at the time, it would be a few hundred dollars more to go with heat killer. Well, times have changed and competition has happened. So heat killer is not the, overpriced, super expensive brand that it kind of was to me, that's sort of kind of become EK lately, where EK charges a premium for everything. Now, EK is a fantastic brand and has very high quality components, but you know what happens when you set the bar that high? Other brands have to meet it, but they have to also undercut it if they want the business. So I would not normally do an unboxing of a radiator. It's been years since I've done something like that, but I've already unboxed one because of the fact that it was such high quality and we were like, whoa, as we were looking at it, I thought I should share it with you guys. Uh, Heat Killer is another one of those German brands. So I, I feel like all the water cooling stuff, with the exception of like Bike Ski and Baro Chill or Baro, Baro Tech, whatever they're called now, Baro, I think it is now. Do you guys know basically those are all the Chinese versions of the stuff that was designed in Europe and then the Chinese brands make their own version of it? So that's why those exist now, but they're all based on designs that have been designed everywhere in the world. But anyway, this is the German brand, like Alpha Cool is a German brand, Aqua Tuning is a German brand, Phobia is a German brand. Actually, Aqua Tuning, Alpha Cool, and Phobia are all the same company. I don't know if you guys know that or not. But anyway, moving on. Um, and I think the other one was Aqua Computer, um, which was like a super high end German boutique brand. Like everything was in German with that one. Like you barely got an English manual. But anyway, moving on, Heat Killer. Um, this is the Heat Killer Red S or the 360S White. So S stands for slim. It's white for this build. Um, you can get it in a performance, which is thicker too, and they just get thicker and bigger and longer as you size them up as what you need. Anyway, let's go ahead and unbox it now. I've talked long enough. This is the white version, which I already explained why I got that, but you can get it in black as well. And I think there might be some other colors available. Very basic packaging, which I am okay with. And to be honest, this feels like it might be recycled cardboard. It's so lightweight. It's got the same bubble wrap you'd find in pretty much any radiator, but check this out already. You can see the, mul the multiple materials used in this. So the construction of this radiator, this is a copper core radiator. So what that means is the end tanks and the rows and the fins 
are copper. And the reason why they use copper, it is a better heat transfer. It has a faster heat transfer uh, when it comes to absorbing the heat from the fluid. So the radiator's job is to take the heat from the fluid going through it, transfer it to these fins, and then it's the, radi the radiator fan's job to move that heat away from the rad, that way it has capacity. But back in the day, all you got was just a plain black painted radiator and maybe some like tapered ends or something. But now we get these extra pieces on here. So if I were to take this apart, which I think I will in this video, you would find that the radiator is very, very basic. And then what they've done now is they've added these end pieces on here, which are powder coated in various colors. And to be fair, EK does this very same thing. I'm not sure who was first at it, EK or Heat Killer, but I feel like Heat Killer's implementation of this is actually better than EK's. Whereas EK's is like this end cap piece uh, that goes on the ends and then the side pieces come off separate and it can be painted and whatnot. Um, I did use the EK version like of these multi-panel radiators in my personal build that I just finished. I almost kind of wish I had gone with the heat killers now. But anyway, moving on. I do have one pet peeve already off the bat that I learned with the other radiator. So you know radiators can go like this with the fitting ends right here. Here's the ports pointing down. Or in this instance, in this case, I'm gonna have a 360 up top. It's not gonna be mounted outside the case. It's just resting up here. Here's the one I already had that I already put fans on. So this is why I've already kind of figured this out. So I'm gonna have one up top, which will be fine. Because if you look, it's got this metal badge on here that says heat killer. And they even went as far as to indent the side panel so that it's flush and not sticking out wider than the radiator. So that would actually cause fitment issues on a very tight space, like say right here where I have the reservoir and pump combo. Because it barely fits in there, if it stuck out wider than the rad, then it would probably not fit. But anyway, that logo says heat killer. You'd be very proud of that. But as soon as you flip it over, right? So if we got the fittings on the left side, if we turn it around this way, there's another badge that's got the fittings on this side. So that way it says heat killer. But when you flip it over upside down, if you're putting the radiator on the bottom, it says ve. So it doesn't matter now if it's this way or this way, it still says ve. So what I'm now debating on doing is using a heat gun to just get this nice and hot and then use my plastic spudger tools to see if I can't lift it without bending it. My fear is because this is metal, if I go to lift it and it's stuck and like the adhesive is really strong, it'll start to bend it up and then it will never lay flat again and then I'll be mad at myself. Um, before we take the radiator apart, let's talk about the hardware. This is the other side of it. Machined screws. Tapered head, which is interesting to me because of the fact that um, Typically you would want a flat head. And what I mean by tapered head is you've got this kind of a cone shape. So if you were like putting this in wood, it would just down in the wood and be solid. The thing is if you're going into metal, like let's say panels in a case or whatever, then it may not sit flat. It may raise a little bit. So I feel like they, although they given it, giving us stainless hardware is nice. Uh, not having that flat bottom of the head is gonna be somewhat of a problem. The other thing to keep in mind too is the fact that this is a very small screw head right here. So depending on your fans, if the holes are really big, it might just go right through the fan and not tighten down on it, which is very possible. Now the fans that we're using on here, these are the Lee and Lee fans. Uh, my, my friend really likes the Lee and Lees. He's never had them, he wants to use them. You can see in there that they look really nice. They're really recessed in this fan, so you can't see it really. At the, on the bottom, you'd be able to if they're like that. They barely, and I mean barely bite the hole because the hole on here is, is a little bit, instead of being perfectly round on these fans, they're a little bit oblong. I'm not sure why they're oblong, but they are oblong, barely. So this screw head tends to just barely bite on there. So that would be my only gripe, those two things with these is the tapered head, and then I feel like the head needs to be a little bigger. But in terms of hardware, they're very nice. Take your work and gaming experience to the next level with the ViewSonic XG340C 2K Ultra Wide High End Display. The XG340C 2K 34 inch 100 Hz Ultra Wide Monitor features HDMI 2.1, AMD FreeSync Premium Pro, 1000R curved screen, VESA display HDR400 and one millisecond response time for the ultimate immersive gaming experience. And take control of multiple devices with KVM support while also taking full control of your display via the Elite Display Controller. To see the full list of specs and features, follow the sponsored link in the description below. 
So this is the radiator mount for the top of this case. And you can see right here, it's got slots and the slots are also recessed a little bit and they're also fairly wide. So already like these screws, do you see how that just fell through? Look, they barely hang on if they're straight, but the second they start to like turn at all, they can fall right through. So what this means is if you over tighten this, it could just with that tapered head, take that thin metal and just bend it down and then the heads will go drop right through. So this is why I'm saying a larger screw head is needed for this. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna mount it down because I just need to see now at this point. That one screw is like barely, it's like a loose tooth that has that one little tiny speck of flesh that it's still hanging on to. So you would absolutely have to do, in my opinion, all the screws just to ensure that, because here's the thing, when the rat is full of liquid, it's pretty, it's pretty weighty. Like it's more weight than you might think. Here's the thing, people could say, but Jay, you're clearly mounting it and it's not falling off and the screw isn't going through. You're absolutely right. This is just this one instance. If your case is even slightly bigger, then that would be a problem. Same thing with your fan screws uh, or your fan holes. If they're even slightly bigger, that'll lead to a problem. So I would do two on the ends and then four total in the middle. I mean, it's connected. It's not going anywhere, but. So if you look down at long ways, you can see that these screws are barely, barely hanging on. All right, so I'm gonna set this one aside for now because I'm not entirely sure I'm gonna leave the fans in that direction or those ports in that ink in that side. I want to take this apart because I wanna see what the construction underneath is like. Let's see if Linus's screwdriver has what I need. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to move on to my iFixit. All right. I fix it time to the rescue. Wait, really? There's no Torx bits? No, there's no Torx bits on his screwdriver. Fail. What? All right, so for those wondering, it's a Torx T8 is the, si is the size of these fittings right here. Now, the reason why I'm even showing this is this gives you, you know what? This is the perfect time for me to use my handy dandy I fix it magnetic tray thingamabobber. Oh wait, they're not magnetic, right? Yeah. <laughs> or I could just go like this. What I started to say before I was so rudely interrupted with magnetism is that this uh, allows you to be able to take a part and custom paint it if you want. Like I I might paint this to go along with the Mega Man theme. I went with white, but if there's too much white going on in here, then the idea with this build was to have the, pay, the case and the build itself look like a level. And then I've obviously got the Mega Man character standing behind me on the GPU standing guard. I still am trying to kind of figure this out as I go. One of the thing I want to point out that's important too. And early rad companies didn't figure this out. And by the way, computer radiators for water cooling were not really like specific to computers. They were just radiators that were adapted to use for computers. So they could be like just any sort of heat core with a G quarter thread. And the problem was the screws would line up perfectly with one of the cooling rows. So if you use too long of a screw, it would pierce that row and then you would get a leak. So I just want to point out that these screws are offset, where if you use the screw that was too long, then it would just crush the fins and it wouldn't touch anything that actually has fluid going through it. So that's important to point out, especially if you're a noob and you've never water cooled before and you haven't thought about the fact that using the wrong screw could absolutely cause damage to your radiator. Got it. Weight savings. <laughs> okay. So, Look at that, there's two holes behind the thing. So if I wanna heat it and get it off now, I can heat it from the backside and maybe push it out through there. I'm not sure why there's two holes right there. But as we take it apart, check this out. It's just a cosmetic piece that slides over the copper end, like I said. And this one would be a little bit harder to get off because it clamps onto the end tank where you have the, uh, the ports. But there you go. So if you wanted to paint the pieces now, you could take out the core and not have to worry about it, um, you know, being an issue regarding painting your fins. Because if you paint the fins, like this painting, I'm not sure if this is Cerakote. It might be Cerakote. Paint insulates. And if you insulate the fins, then you have less heat transfer. But radiator companies tend to use a Cerakote or a very, very light layer of paint to give it some color, but not insulate. Cerakote has, doesn't do that, so. This is, uh, a Cerakote also is a heat transfer component but that's black. It just dawned on me when I put it back together right now, if I use this as the bottom rad, I could just flip these over. So now they're the right way. Oh wait, I can't. 
I was about to ask what the screws were submitted. Nope. Oh, because the fitting end has a space. Yep, it's different. They're not symmetrical. All right, well, I had big brain that turned out just to be big dumb. Just screw it back up and you're good. And then the fins that I that I wrinkled up a little bit right here, I can't even really see because they're under the cover. They might've already been that way. I just may not have noticed. Here's the thing, these are hand assembled. Like any factory they come from, they are hand assembled, which means they are going to have um, bent fins. And I, I've gotten emails from people before saying, I got a new radiator and it had some bent fins. What should I do? Should I send it back? It's like, sure, but you'll get another one with bent fins. There's always gonna be at least a, a couple bent fins because of the fact that they are hand assembled. So, okay, a little side rant that I started a second ago was that, did you know that in the monitor industry, I think up to three dead pixels is considered within spec. Wrap your mind around that one. Imagine you buy a $2,000 plus monitor and you have a dead pixel. All right, so it's back together. Weird. Uh, my very my very first, I guess that's the other thing that is gonna happen because until like fans are mounted to it and all these pieces are sort of just sort of floating in there, you might notice some flex and creaking in it. But as soon as you mount the fans to it, that won't be the case. That one was the same way. Um, anyway, the irony that it, I think this is my first radiator review that re involved a disassembly. <laughs> Times have changed. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, a lot of folks have been really asking me to get back to the water cooling content, which it's been quite a while, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. I've got this build to finish, so you guys will see some more videos coming up on this. Um, probably the loop bending part, because that's the part people love to watch. Uh, if you guys are enjoying this kind of content, make sure you let us know down below in the comments, and as always, we'll see you in the next one. As I'm now fixing the, fin the fins that I bent, that I'm not gonna see, but I'll know they're there, therefore it'll bother me.